Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tommy Jordan. I'm a county commissioner from Stanley County, North Carolina. I'm also a business owner. My wife is a business owner. I'm a husband and I'm a father, and I'm going through COVID-19 like everybody else. Uh, well, that's not actually true. I'm, I'm more blessed than some. My business hasn't been shuttered yet. My business hasn't been hurt yet. Not, not, not really, not in a, a way that's lasting. Still might, but it hasn't yet. I'm doing this video for the governor. Governor Cooper, I, as a commissioner and a, an interested party that's been doing these videos for the general public, trying to kind of break things down so people understand it in layman's terms, I've watched every single press conference and every single video <clears throat> conference you've done. I've joined a, every commissioner's conference call, every NCACC call, health department call, DHHS call, command staff meeting, and a stakeholders call that I have been invited to, and there have been hundreds. So I've given my time to people to watch videos and watch webinars and be and learn and listen and act on that knowledge. And I'm hoping that I can convince the governor of North Carolina to do that one time with me, with this video. And uh, so not to, so it's not to waste your time, I'll, I'll get right into it. It's April 24th. You enacted executive order number 120 on March 23rd. North Carolina's businesses, a lot of them have now been shut down for 31 days. While I understand it has been a difficult decision for you, and this is not, let me be clear, this is not a political bash or anything else. I'm a conservative or Republican. It's a fair bet I didn't vote for you, sir. It's a fair bet I won't vote for you the next time. Doesn't mean I wish you any ill, Ill will, just means your political ideologies and mine aren't necessarily always aligned. Having said that, <clears throat> I ha for the most part, I have no, I won't even pretend to have a better idea of how to navigate our state through this pandemic than what you have done since this pandemic started. I don't think all of your solutions have been the perfect ones, but I also think you have access to information that I don't. And I also think that you have done a great job under, uh, miserable, horrible circumstances that no one has ever encountered before. So to use a, you know, an, a, an oft repeated phrase, you've been in un uncharted water <clears throat> and you've handled it pretty well. Now, yesterday you did your video webinar teleconference in response to what North Carolina's plans are for their foreseeable future. And you extended our stay home orders and our business closings till at least May the 8th, 15 more days on top of the 30. That's 45 days of businesses being shut down. It's 45 more days. That's 45 days of people staying at home. People like my mother have already been, my mother's been home now for over two months because um, she took my advice before you gave your advice. So she, she's been home for two months away from the work, the job she volunteers at, away from people, away from me away from uh, <clears throat> friends and family in church. She's been at home for eight weeks on Sunday. Um, so from one side of this, from, uh, one angle that I want to approach this from is, regardless of the health consequences, people have a breaking point. And I think we're approaching it. I think some have already surpassed it, but I, I do think collectively we're appro approaching it. Um, the, on the other side of this thing, you uh, you made an executive. Or, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep my thoughts together here and uh, articulate them in a way that takes the least amount of time. And I'm failing to do, do do that very efficiently. But there's a lot to say. <clears throat> I feel like you're following the guidance of Washington, and in your position, there's probably not much other guidance there is to follow. So Washington's guidance is, hey. Begin the gating process when you've experienced 14 days of downturn in cases, you know, in, in a, a test positives. Then you can enter phase one, then you go to phase two in two or three weeks, then you go to phase three in four to six weeks, and then we'll talk about what happens after phase three. I understand that if we follow that plan in a perfect world, we would be, well, let's see, you said May 8th to begin phase one, best case, plus two weeks is, or three weeks is the end of May, that's June 1, to begin phase two two 
four to six weeks, let's assume six, that's the middle of July to begin phase three, it would be at least the first of August before some businesses open back up. Let me say one, a couple of things unequivocally. Number one, no business that has ever been founded in this, in this state or in this country ever anticipated or planned for or has the ability to plan for being closed for an entire month. That's a twelfth of a year. That's 15% of their annual income. I mean, nobody ever has to think about 15% of their annual income because that's not something we would ever do. No one would ever close a business for a month. No one has ever closed a business for a month just for the fun of it. Um, you close for a week. You close for a week for a major holiday. You close for vacation if you're a small business and you've made some money. So you, maybe you close for a week so the owners can enjoy vacation. Or you close for Christmas for three days or Thanksgiving for two. Or you close for Memorial or Labor Day. But you don't close for a month. And you certainly don't close for two. Why? Because you'll die. It's not a if, it's not a maybe. You'll die. You will die. Thus far, two weeks ago, we hit the, the milestone of 25% of all small businesses in North Carolina already having shut their doors forever. That's one in four businesses that will never open their doors again. That was two weeks ago. I bet now, and I don't know this, but I'm just going to say if two weeks ago 25% were closed forever, Let's say half a month later, I, I, I would bet the metric is somewhere around 35 to 40 percent. Let's go with 35. 35 percent of all small businesses in North Carolina are never going to open their doors again already. And that's if you lifted the ban today. So I understand why you're following Washington, D.C.'s guidance, because it's the only guidance above the state level that you can possibly seek. And I don't, I don't hate you for doing it. I don't dislike you for doing it. I'm not mad that you're doing it, but I'm disappointed that you're doing it. Because whether or not you want the responsibility, you are the governor of the state of North Carolina, one of the greatest states in the United States, and definitely one of the greatest states in the Union. So it's your job to lead this state. That's the job you signed up for. And extending this shut down for another two weeks with the hopes because let's be clear you're hoping some better guidance comes out of dc you're hoping the trump white house gives you some better guidance and and urges you in another direction because you don't want to be responsible for having to make the difficult decision to open this state and kill a not insignificant majority of the elder, elder population because let's be clear that's what's going to happen you're forced to make one of two choices. Choice number one, and the one that you have made, and the one that I am truly, sir, disappointed in you for having made, is you made the choice to continue to sacrifice our economic prosperity on the chance that it's going to save some lives. Will it save some lives? Yes. Will it cost some businesses? Yes. And there has to be, at some point, I'm sorry, but we have to actually have this discussion and say it out loud. Because you're saying it behind closed doors. We all know you are. I've said it behind closed doors. I said it in closed session at a commissioner's meeting, and I'll say it again now publicly. There comes a time when we, and, and, and we are there right now. Let, that, let the noise go by, sorry. There comes a time when we have to decide, is it okay to let some people die to turn businesses back up and get them back going again? And the answer, I'm sorry to say, is yes. It's not a perfect world. It's not a perfect answer. and That's not the Christian answer to give. But it's the reality of the world we live in. We don't live in a perfect world. We don't get to follow the White House's recommendations because things aren't perfect. We need to reopen this state. I don't want to. I don't want to reopen the state and let folks get sick and let more people get sick. Because let's be honest, if we reopen the state tomorrow, if we ease restrictions on businesses tomorrow, more people will die. And they will be elderly people. So we've learned a couple of things from this virus in a short amount of time. And you don't have to be an epidemiologist or you don't have to be anything that ends in the word ologist to make these assumptions or to recognize these facts. Fact number one, this virus does not kill children. For the, for, by and large, doesn't affect kids too bad. Fantastic. This virus doesn't affect healthy middle-aged people. Great. I mean, it, you, you, you get a cold then you're fine. This virus kills the shit out of old people. 
And it really, it really stomps a mud hole in older people with, with compromised immune systems, either due to cancer or um, immunosuppression issues, or people who just had the flu or bronchitis, I mean, any, any number of things. This is a virus that targets the unhealthy and the older population. And I'm sorry, if I offended somebody when I said that. If, if by saying you have asthma, you feel like I've called you unhealthy, well, I did, because you're not. That's why you have a disease, it's called asthma. It means you're not healthy, you have asthma, you're an asthmatic. Not a horrible thing, it's only been a horrible thing for, for the last month of your existence because now it's considered unhealthy because this virus attacks you. I know we just lost a 43 year old guy, he's healthy, he's my age. 43 year old cop, active, fit, healthy, had asthma, COVID killed him sucks but that's who this virus goes after so for the most part the uh, other side of that coin is kids are going to be fine healthy working class middle america is going to be fine most executives and ceos are going to be fine most wait staff and cashiers are going to be fine some people will not be fine my mother who's 72 years old would not be fine but guess what if you opened up businesses tomorrow I'm going to tell my mother, Mom, I love you. Please continue to stay home, and I will go to Walmart for you, and I will go to Lowe's for you and get filters for your air conditioner, and I will go to Amazon and get your vacuum cleaner bags, and I'll be sure that you don't have to go places and run into just five hours yourself. I will care for you because I'm your child, and that's what children do. And other people in, in, in this state will do the same for those that they care about, and I'll do the same for my friends and my neighbors you know, if, if I need to. But at some point, you're going to have to accept responsibility for the fact that you're going to kill this state's economy. Now, your solution so far, no, I'm sorry, let me back up. You're not you're going to kill the state's economy. You have effectively killed the state's economy. You have the opportunity to walk that back and change your mind. I'm just saying I think you should. Do I think you should open everything tomorrow? No. But let's be honest, and I have heard this particular one until I'm sick and tired of hearing it. But it is a good, valid example. Hair salons. You closed hair salons on March 23rd. Okay? <laughs> These people are pissed. Because you've killed their business model. You've to you literally have killed the entire business. There's no stylist anywhere that has a month's income set aside. They're hairstylist. They're not rich. For the most part, they're not particularly good business people. Because they're hairstylists. Don't get me wrong. They're necessary. I love them. I love mine. I have a great hair. I have great hair. I have a great hairstylist. You kidding me? I have great hair. All right. Um, I, I, they're great people. They're not necessarily good business owners. If they were, they'd own bigger businesses. They wouldn't just be hairstylists. But they have a job, and it's a career. It's one they love and one they do well. And you have killed it, because not a single hair salon in North Carolina is has been designed to be closed for fifteen percent of the entire year. None of those people can afford this. They're doing, I don't know what you call it, black market haircut jobs at home right now to hope to hopefully put groceries on, 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 on the table because they have no choice. They live in fear of the, the state's cosmetics board finding out about it and taking their license. You just can't shut them down forever. I know you legally have the authority, but you need to recognize you don't have the moral authority to make that decision and you need to walk it back. You can't keep businesses closed. At some point in time, people have to be allowed to act like people and, and make decisions on their own. Where a lot of people are sheep, I won't, I won't deny that. And that's who you're catering to. You're catering to people who are too stupid to keep themselves alive. And I, for one, am just one of those that believe that if people are going to die, let them. If people are too stupid to stay home and follow the rules and they go out and get themselves killed with COVID-19, that's on them. It's not on you. It's not on Applebee's for being open. It's not on the hair salon for offering to cut their hair. If they go get their hair cut and, they and they're, they're okay with having someone this far from their head for two and a half hours while they get their hair colored, do I think it's stupid? Yeah, I think it's stupid. But if they're okay doing it, not your problem and not my problem. Let them go do it. Some of them are going to get sick. Some of them are going to die. And there's nothing we can do about it. But we cannot just sit here and keep the entire state closed forever. Okay? You're going to have to suck it up. Put your big boy pants on, sir, and admit that that's the harsh truth and, and just do it anyway. It sucks. 
I know it sucks. I'm sorry. I'm glad it's your office and not mine that has to make the decision. My county wrote a letter along with a bunch of uh, other counties that, quite frankly, I disagree with. I voted for it because, eh, why not? I know the letter doesn't mean squat. The people think it means squat, but they're wrong. The letter is pretty much a letter that you may or may not have read. Probably one of your aides read it because I know we sent it yesterday. And it says something, something, something along the lines of, we appreciate what you've done, blah, 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 butt kiss, butt kiss. And we want you to give the power to open the counties back up to the individual respective counties and let us make decisions ourselves. Yeah, no, we don't. Well, we don't want that. People that say that want to gather good votes for people that, well, they want to gather votes from people because it looks like we're supporting local businesses. We're not. That's the single most stupid thing I have heard a politician say yet is that we want to open we want to have the authority to open local businesses. If that's what you believe, you need to be kicked out of politics forever because that is the absolute most moronic thing you could possibly utter right now. And if you'd like me to tell you why, I'll tell you why, but in a whole different video because it has nothing to do with the governor. However, you're not going to give us that authority, and I know that, and that's fine. I don't want that authority. I want you to use the authority that you have, and I want you to open the state back up, and I want you to live with the tough decision that it's going to suck and it's going to cause some, some more people to die than would die otherwise. And that's horrible, and I wish it weren't the case. But you can't, you can't stop the whole, you literally can't make the world stop turning because you want to wait till everyone is safe and then let it go again. You'll never be safe enough. And quite frankly, if you don't, you're going to get to a point where it quits, it stops being words. People are going to physically not take this much longer. You're going to put law enforcement in a difficult position where they agree with the people that are opening their business up, but you're going to have them tasked with enforcing fines and penalties on these people, or maybe shutting their businesses back down. And then you're going to wind up with a point, well, guess what? Law enforcement doesn't want to do that anymore. And then you're going to find out that you don't have the ability to actually make law enforcement do what law enforcement doesn't want to do. And it's going to cause a lot of problems. It's going to cause riots. And I don't want to see riots in my state. I don't want to see my law enforcement personnel put in difficult positions they shouldn't have to be put in because people won't make the tough call they need to make. You need to make the call. You need to, you need to open the state back up on Monday. Not fully. I agree. You, use some sense. In fact, I think you should pass an executive order, order that says plain and clearly, executive order what would it be, 132 or something, that... Um, you know, if you go out and get COVID-19 after the state opens back up for the next, let's say, 60 days, you're not allowed to sue anybody for it because your dumbass went out and got it. Because let's be clear, if you stay home, you're safe. If people stay home, they're safe. They won't get this virus by staying home. But if people go out and bring it home to their loved ones or they go out and get their hair done and they're 65 years old and they really got to get that perm fixed because they just can't can't stand it well I mean I hate to say it but it serves you right it sucks but you know that generation taught my generation to accept the consequences of what you deal with and if the consequence of you gotten just having to get your perm done is that it kills you I'm not gonna say I told you so but you're gonna know it as you lay there dying on a ventilator you're gonna know damn it if I just hadn't had to get my my gray dyed back out I'd spend this Christmas with my grandkids. That person is not my responsibility. It's not your responsibility. They're adults. They're mature adults. They're able to make that decision themselves and weigh the risk themselves. We have to get our businesses back open, sir. The state can't survive this. And if your answer is more stimulus checks, you know as well as I do. Most people are too stupid to know that the checks that you're writing them are coming out of their own pocket next year and in the immediate future or the short-term foreseeable future. You don't have any money that we didn't give you. So if you're writing money, if you're writing checks to the general public, be it the state or the federal government, you're taking our tax money that you had earmarked for other stuff and temporarily giving it back to us. The hope, the hope that Trump is making, and boy, it's risky. I'm not saying he's the greatest president the world's ever had. I'm not saying he's, he's the worst. I think he's okay. I voted for him. He makes some good decisions. I wish he'd take away his Twitter account. But 
he does seem to make some good business decisions. And I think, I think my, my personal bet is his business mind is betting that if he injects enough cash into the American society, it'll bootstrap the process and we'll start making more money than we would have otherwise and it'll pay itself off. Boy, that's a risk. I mean, I hope he's right because people that, people that assume he's wrong usually wind up being proved wrong. And so I have a little bit of faith that it's going to work, but not much. And, uh, I know that people filing unemployment uh, and you giving it to him, I mean, it's it's not your money, and it's going to run out. It's going to run out very quickly, and it's going to result in huge inflation and higher taxes, and people are too dumb to know that. They just know that you're giving them money, and they're happy. The uh, uh, unemployment situation is not working. You're paying people more to be off work than you were to let them be at work. That doesn't work. And now we have employees that, re that resent going to work. You know, this is sad. And this happens even in my own county. I've seen it happen, and, and, and I mean in county go government. I, I, I don't know the names of who, and I don't want the names. But we have people who are legitimately pissed off that they have to come to work and do the job that they're paid for. Right now. Because of where we stand with this, this, uh, this pandemic. That's true. I'll say it again. We have people who are angry that they have the privilege of coming to work and getting paid. You know why they're angry? <clears throat> because they're little socialist shitheads. But they're angry because they believe that since other people are being laid off and told not to come to work because they're not in control, but yet are still drawing some money from either unemployment or whatever, that they too should be able to sit home and do nothing and get paid. That's what you've created. We, we, we've created an economy where people are mad they have to earn their income in a tough situation. I don't know how to express how disgusted I am with people that feel that way. And if you're one of them people, I suggest you not vote for me next time because my God, I would not support you in anything that you do in life. That's a despicable, sad, pathetic outlook to have. That you can't, you can't, uh, God, I don't even want to talk about it. You know what? It's not part of the, this video. That's not the governor's fault, but it's a result of what the poli of what policies you put in place to try to help people through this. What we need is to be able to get back to work. I'm not mad about it, sir. But <laughs> the, you rolled the dice, and, and and the thing that popped up on on the pips was close the state for two more weeks, and then a hope for the best. Really. Is hoping for the best got us anywhere right now? It's not. We don't have masks. We don't have PPE. We don't have any of the things that we've been supposed to get. The strategic national stockpile was depleted five days into this event. Nothing has gone right. What makes you think that just shutting our doors, closing our eyes, holding our breath and waiting is going to solve it? It's not. It's going to take decisive action and decisive action that you have to own. And that action is starting to open business back up on Monday. That, if you want to be a hero to North Carolina, that's it. I don't mean you make them open up. I mean, you just say, look, here's some simple guidelines. If you are a business in North Carolina, you may open. As long as you enforce social distancing, as long as you enforce maintaining six foot of separation. If you're not able to maintain six foot of separation, you don't get to open. End of story. Now, I realize dentists, hair salons can't do that, but I, I mean six, six foot of separation between patrons, not between customer and uh, provider or customer vendor, however you want to say it. Um, if you're the Vietnamese lady that paints my wife's toes and you got to be this close together to do your job, then that's fine. If my wife chooses to go get her toes done, great, that's her problem. If, my, if I choose to go get a haircut at Great Clips, fine, that's my problem. That's between me and the stylist. Um, you make the rule that no one can be fired for not coming to work right now because not until, not until we hit, let's say, what you would call phase two. You know, if you feel that you need to be home and be safe, then for God's sake, be home, be safe. If you're elderly or you're compromised, great. You need a doctor's note. Stay home. Let unemployment even take care of those people for right now. That's fine. 
In fact, that may be the best use of unemployment yet. If, if someone is sick, let them stay home, get uh, draw on unemployment while they get healthy or while this virus passes them by because maybe they have asthma. Maybe they're a realtor. I have a friend of mine. She's in, she's in real estate. She has asthma, uh, so, uh, chronic asthma. Maybe she stays home and draws unemployment while the rest of her teammates go back to work. At least that's less burden on the state's unemployment system. Okay? And the rest of her coworkers get to go back to work. And no, you can't be fired right now for being home for medical reasons due to COVID-19. But the employer can hire people temp temporarily. Is that perfect? No, it's not perfect. It's not perfect for anyone, but it's a solution. Because I hate people that say your idea sucks, but don't give solutions. So here's ones I'm trying to give. And I'll be glad to work these up and maybe discuss why they're good or bad if you so choose. I don't know that you will, but if you wanted to, I'd be glad to be part of one of those panels or, or, or committees to help come up with a solution because I, I'm an ideas guy. That's what I do for a living. I solve problems, and there's a lot of problems right now. And your solutions, no offense, aren't working. So, um, yeah, maybe we, you open up businesses. You require them to maintain social distancing. And if they fail, you fine the hell out of them. Payment due immediately. There's an executive order for you. If you get rid of the ticket for so-and-so, it's due right then. You're not going to court. You can appeal it later, but it's due right then. Maybe it needs to be videoed. Maybe you have to have video evidence. I don't know. You have smart people. Y'all figure it out. But there are people that are going to not pay attention. There are people that are going to intentionally violate social distancing. And you know what? You can't stop them because they're assholes. I'm sorry. It sucks. But it's true. But we need to get our state back open. I've talked long enough. I mean, if you haven't got it by now, you're not going to. I mean, no disrespect to the governor or his office. I'm obviously passionate about this particular topic because I am a businessman. My clients are business people. My clients own businesses. Actually, every one of my clients owns a business. And I'm, I'm talking to them every day. And they're getting more despondent. They're closer to failure. They're closer to just giving up and shutting their doors and uh that's not what we need sir we need you to lead and we need you to lead from a position of strength not a position of fear carolina can do this if it's done right if it's done smart but you cannot wait be, to be clear you can't wait three weeks for anything there can't be a three week oh we're gonna do this and then three weeks later we do do this are you out of your mind Again, no disrespect. Sorry. I'm a little bit passionate. But nobody can wait three more weeks to be opened back up. Nobody. Virus or no virus or no virus. Sick people or no sick people. They got to be uh, open. So, I don't know. That's it. Have a good day, y'all. Thanks for your time.